So as you guys know, I got some seeds from Baker Creek Seed Company and uh, I've got the garden in now. Uh, so this is a virgin piece of land, hasn't been planted. What we didn't realize starting off is that there's about eight or so inches, about a spade depth's worth of topsoil with a substrate of clay. So that's what clay looks like. I balled this up this morning and left it sit in the sun. It's as hard as a rock now. So any, all the soil below eight inches is clay. We brought in five uh, dump trailer loads full of horse manure aged five years. We did three and a half loads by hand and uh, we had help on the last load. So we did a load and a half uh, with some help from the farmer. Kind of felt sorry for us loading it all in. So it's quite the job to start with. We dumped all that in and uh, we had mixed it a few times with the tractor uh, from a help from a friend. And then we took the uh, walk behind tiller and then we tilled that in a little bit extra. It's been pretty wet this season so it's not helping with the clay soil situation. Uh, if you've never uh, gardened in clay you won't realize that it holds it's the good thing about it is it holds moisture but the bad thing is it holds moisture so what you're seeing behind you is essentially a bathtub uh, it holds moisture it holds nutrients but it doesn't have very much organic matter it'll have some micronutrients in it so what we have to feed the plants is basically what we've been we managed to bring in as far as the manure there will be some some nutrients in the in the clay itself and whatever we add to it will stay but that's kind of besides the point the main issue is uh, is planting anything that's a root is a root vegetable won't work like a carrot or a parsnip uh, from my research uh, corn will do well and squash will do well so we it, we should have some success we have uh, a variety of things planted um, several rows of corn uh, different varieties, several rows of squash, uh, pumpkin, uh, I've got some tomatoes. Um, we put up a pole bean uh, teepee out in the middle. So that's uh, cedar branches we've lashed together, some dead cedar branches lashed together. And plant around the base of those, four or five seeds each. And that'll climb up and form a nice uh, enclosed area but it'll also provide support for the pole beans. And uh, so the, the theme of this garden, if you haven't followed from the introduction, is Native American. So I've planted a lot of heirloom variety seeds that are passed down through the, uh, through the generations. So some of the seeds are, you know, several hundred years old or hundred years old, passed, passed down. So the vegetables aren't decorative. They're, you know, for consumption. Well, they, they look interesting in their heirloom variety, and they have interesting colors. They were harvested for, for the nutrients, for soups, and for pies, and for baking. So none of the things I planted here are just decorative. None of the corn are decorative. They're all edible. So as far as yield, we'll have to see. It's going to be interesting to see what we get out of the garden. I, 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 uh, I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I think it's going to produce. I think uh, building up the mounds as I have, up to two feet of, of soil in some places for the squash. Uh, I did a big, nice big mound for the Gate Okosamine squash. Uh, it was up probably around three and a half, four feet tall. And I planted my four seeds that I have remaining there. I also planted some of the other bigger squash in similar, but not quite as big mounds. That'll provide enough substrate for those roots to climb down. So get down nice and deep like squash like to do, and then produce all the stuff at the top that we like to see as far as productivity. Those, those are in the four, or 15 to 40 pound range for productivity for the, each squash, whereas the Gate Cosamine it produces a giant squash. So giant squash, giant pile. And that'll make up for the fact that I don't really have very much soil depth here at around 8 to 12 inches. We've also got planted here some tomatoes. Uh, I, I bought them pre uh, or started already, so it was just a matter of putting those in the soil. 
it'll be interesting to see if those turn out. We don't know because there's a it, it does form a large tape root up to two feet, and here getting down into two feet won't uh, provide the nutrients it needs. So again, this is the kind of soil we're working with clay. So next year we're going to have to add a lot more organic matter. So we have plans to get some cow manure and some more horse manure from down the road, and we'll also probably truck in some topsoil. So we'll see what happens this year. And, uh, and next year we'll, we'll come a little bit more prepared. Again, this was property that was acquired just this year. So we didn't really know what we were getting into. Maybe I'll take you around on a, a quick tour to show you the layout of the garden and you can get a better sense of the scale we're looking at. So in the first couple rows here, I've got the, uh, the corn glass gem. So three rows there. Uh, I don't remember if I put some squash in that in those rows or not. Uh, the next three rows over here is the, uh, I've got the painted mountain corn here and I think at the end, the back corner here, I have uh, some couple sunflower seeds because I didn't have enough room and the interspersed to have some squash and I don't, I don't recall the uh, variety put in there right now but we'll figure that out as things go on. There's another big uh, row of, of squash planted in here kind of hard to tell the soil depth but it's uh, about two feet at this end here so nice and nice and high I've got uh, bush beans planted in here in this little space up over here are tomatoes just planted around the outside of my bean tree you can see they just form a circle around here and then in the center here is this the bean tree so around each of the around the base four or five seeds around each and those should crawl up and uh, fill this whole whole space in here so another couple rows there's one row here one row two rows three rows are all squash squash and pumpkin So that's a, a table queen squash. I, I believe it's kind of like an acorn squash. Uh, Lakota squash in this row here. And then between is a, a bush bean. And then this row here is pumpkin. So it'll roll all the way down there. A little bit of room here so I threw some sunflower seeds down in this little space here that's a little corner up over here is zucchini and this is my big Gaete Yocosamine mound which is hard to tell but uh, it's about three feet now four feet kind of sank down a little bit and then I have a big long row this was originally going to be like a pole bean and I was going to run a fence down here, but it didn't happen. So instead I've got sunflower seeds around, a run around the back here. And then I've got tomatoes in front. And at the far end here, the, the whole garden runs about 50 feet long. There's corn that runs two rows up here. So in total we have about 50 feet long by 25 feet wide so I'll give you an idea of the the size here it is a big space and it's a lot of soil to work with so it does need a lot of amending so I've learned a few things I've learned uh, about working with clay soil at least and uh, as things go on I'll I'm sure I'll learn even more be interesting to see what happens as as far as productivity goes, I'm really curious to know if I'm going to have enough from this to you know, how many meals I can provide. I know squash goes a long way as far as calories and uh, I've tried to eat squash for a little while here, like as far as lunch, a lunch here and there. And it, uh, it does provide a lot of nutrients. You've mixed that, mix that in with some maple, maple syrup or some uh, maple sugar. It does go a long way and it's a great addition to any kind of meat. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the garden for now and hopefully we'll get some updates from the other guys who've got seeds too and 
we've been in communication back and forth too and they've they, they've shared their stories and their progress and their hang-ups just like just like mine but uh, anyway you can see the the soil is really clumpy you can see how it clumps up so that's what we're dealing with here clumps of soil and it's not just because it's wet it's because it's because it's clay so we're gonna have to work to end that anyway we'll this is the first update in the series and uh, hopefully hopefully we have something to show when everything sprouts up in a week or two. So I just want to show you around my home garden. I forget what I planted a lot of the spots because I've been running around from garden to garden but anyway I'll do my best to remember. So I've got some uh, regular bush beans planted in this little plot here. I've had some difficulty with these plots because they get a lot of sun and there's the soil depth you know it's only a 10 uh, 10 inch box so they dry out pretty fast this is some swiss char that got uh, planted over from last year uh, some chives that grew up in the garden so that's uh, pretty much a wild chive and then we bought some uh, romaine type lettuce just planted that in there and then there's some new uh, swiss char coming up that's planted from this year and then some mixed lettuce so this is pretty much my lettuce box. Now this is a bit of an experiment. I believe this is a wild carrot. Um, I transplanted this from a uh, infill waste lot. And uh, I wasn't sure I was going to try to eat it, but then I wasn't sure about the ID on it. So I planted it here and I'm going to watch it throughout the season to see if it is in fact a wild carrot. Uh, this box hasn't been planted yet. Now I did plant this box and I can't remember what I put in it. I don't think it's carrots, but it's probably something small. So I'm gonna have to wait and see when that comes up. Uh, over here, I've kind of spilled out my regular boxes. See, I've got a number of boxes here. So I've uh, had to make some extra room for these tomatoes. I actually have four more tomatoes. Uh, those are just the uh, regular grape sugar, uh, shun sugar, so there's a small tomato that we like to eat so we keep those close to home uh, at the back I planted some sunflowers so those will be nice to see come up and in the front here I planted some squash so we'll let those crawl out uh, we we enjoy lots of tomatoes so at the back again more the same uh, sun sugar tomatoes and in the front some eggplant here um, I think I planted some Swiss chard at the front as well or some parsnips possibly can't remember now uh, these are our garlic. We plant those in the fall. They're doing really well. They're almost uh, they're well over my waist. So they're doing really, really well. We'll get some garlic scapes off those. So don't throw your scapes out. Keep those, eat them and fry them. Um, I ended up putting my uh, pear, uh, Baker Creek heirloom seeds. The, these are climbing a pole bean and they'll climb up on the mesh here. So we've strung that across this old farm fencing. And some more garlic. These will come out uh, not too long, a month or so from now. So these boxes will get replanted. I haven't planted anything at the back yet. So when this box gets taken out, we'll decide what to do with those. So these are kind of interesting, Those uh, that wild mint or um, wild lemon balm. This, uh, Geez, what did I plant here? I know I filled the box up. I think I put some kind of squash in there or zucchini. No, this is a zucchini box here. So we'll see how far that goes. We like to get zucchini for pies or for cake, sorry. So here's some more tomatoes at the back here. We've, we've got those from starts. Some Roma tomatoes. Those grow really tall. Our soil here is mostly sand and uh, mix. And again, another mystery box. I forget what I planted here. Another small, um, taking up that box there. We've got another at the front. I forget what I planted there as well. So we've got tomatoes here. And then we started this year a, an asparagus. Um, so we've got four roots there. We won't get anything from this year. And we won't get anything from next year and probably the year after that. So it's kind of a three year project for the asparagus. And then some more overflow here. I planted this this morning. I got some more horse manure and uh, mixed that in with the soil. At the back, a sunflower 
and then I planted um, another row here of uh, I believe a squash and uh, that'll crawl out so anyway it's a pretty sizable plot for for the space that we have and we use all of it and we get a pretty good yield so we pull we put the stuff here I kept the stuff here that I would want to use on a daily basis stuff that I could pull like the zucchini we could pull one if we want one we don't have to drive a big distance to get it and uh, the stuff that doesn't take a lot of room so we didn't grow things like pumpkin and we go we grew through a few squash and of course we grew lots of tomatoes because they grow well and uh, we like to eat them we can just come out and grab one we sometimes grow snow peas along the back fence but uh, that didn't get done this year because uh, as you can see the neighbors put in a new fence and so we had to hold up the production on that if you can see at the back corner here that's a uh, chicken coop and that might be going over to my brothers and we'll uh, have some chickens so we did used to have chickens but they bothered the neighbors so we took those out so anyway we've got a couple boxes here we have to decide what to do I threw some beans over here and that's a lettuce plot and then we threw another container up here just off the deck and uh, there's some more Swiss chard coming up here this box gets really shaded I used to have a uh, runners that came up tied to the upper balcony and then uh, try to get pole beans to climb up there but they never did there's this big tree over here likes to shade everything out so and that's been cut back as well as the tree in the back so those are my plots those are my two plots I have another third plot uh, with a buddy but I haven't been over there yet we're making plans to do that and I'm gonna help him out plant the rest of the stuff so it's just an idea of what you can do with a, uh, a small, fairly small yard and get quite a bit of yield out of it. Morning everybody, Ray Fletcher here, Riverbend Longbows. And I'm doing a Baker Creek seed update with the conjunction with the Wooded Beardsman. First of all, this is my pumpkin patch, the Connecticut pumpkin. 44 foot radius and uh, so far they've all germinated except for four. And they're planted on the 14th of May. Now we'll walk over and see my other garden. Alright, so here's my circle garden. I do it in raised boxes. Uh, over here, the half circle buffer zone is the painted mountain corn, and it's coming up nice. I had to replace a bunch of them because of rabbits. And then uh, in the boxes, we'll check it out. this box I planted the Cherokee Trail beans and same over there and in this box I planted the white scallop squash and I'll have to train all that back once it starts coming up but it hasn't germinated yet I just planted it a week ago and we had some cold wet weather soils kind of cool and damp so hopefully the seeds didn't rot and then here is the G Ocosamine squash bean that was uh, gifted to Wooded Beardsman by Sean Woods and so we'll see how that does I'll have to train it back and probably just uh, cut it down to a couple of fruits might have to tint it and hand pollinate it because all my neighbors plant squash too so but that's a cap on planting talk to you later thanks for watching hi everybody welcome to a nice afternoon in sunny north Toronto just doing a quick update on the garden so far, the Three Sisters Garden at uh, the Wooded Beardsman. Quite nicely, um, Baker's Creek Seeds have actually allowed me to do, so I'm just going to spin the camera. So first off, this has got really nothing to do with it, but I keep telling people this. Amaranth seeds grow like weeds in Toronto. They end up being around about Four foot, five foot tall, easy to harvest, lots of good seed grains at the end of it, so it's worth doing. Uh, the rhubarb has been partially harvested, made some nice rhubarb apple crisp. So this is the test garden, my on the floor garden. Um, and as you can see, a few parts of it are actually starting to poke up. And I'm hoping in the next week or so 
I'm going to have to start harvesting, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to start putting in stakes. So I'm starting to think about how to do that now. I might use stakes and I might use a combination of stakes and string. Anyway, my pear tree is doing great. So I'm hoping to get some pears out of that in a year or two. And bear with me, we walk through the garden. Nice sunny day. A little ash tree, I believe. Probably not an ash tree, but anyway, wait. Fungus growing great. And as you can see, I've worked very hard on dandelion removal, and it's working well. And I use the pull up method, not anything else. So, the other part of the garden is what I would traditionally do is my raised boxes, and I strongly recommend these. Um, if there's ash fall or a nuclear issue you just tap these double tap them nail them in and a year or so later you've got a lot of safe wood sorry about the noise that's just uh, the council cutting the grass so this is actually the three sisters part as you can see the corn uh, that I started is doing great everything else is starting to show some signs of life but there's really not a lot to tell you yet uh, the rest of the garden, the vegetable garden, starting to come on really good. Uh, the parsley actually came back from last year. That's good, and as I said, the kale's doing great. Anyway, that's it from me in North Toronto, Google's Cat, saying goodbye and thank you, and I will do an update when I have some more to show.